Um, okay, so I'll, now I'll start. No worries, there seems to be some bus issues. Uh, so I guess there might even be more people coming. I know at least three people who said they were coming uh, today. So we'll see. Okay, so actually uh, today um, I thought we would actually pretty much just go straight into uh, a practice, straight into some meditation. Um, we have now reached uh, almost, I guess, with eight sessions like this, there isn't really a half. Uh, but we're we're close to halfway through, and and so far we've been um, discussing and practicing the cultivation of mindfulness, the cultivation of of these uh, attentional skills of of having a focused, stable, clear presence, attention, uh, and awareness. Uh, and so this session, which is called settling the mind, and next week's session, which is just it's called resting in, in stillness or awareness of awareness. Those are still within the, the context of cultivating mindfulness or cultivating shamatha, as it's, it's called in Buddhist psychology. And then, as I mentioned a few times, the three final sessions will then be about applying mindfulness. So using this, these attention skills to gain more insight into ourselves, our own habits and uh, how we relate to the world and also into the world of phenomena itself. So gaining, gaining insights and um, maybe changing habits in positive ways uh, as, a, as a result of, of applying the mindfulness skills that we've been practicing. Um, and just uh, a brief uh, summary, brief overview before, because I thought we were going to practice and then I will do uh, a meditation that kind of uh, uses all the three things that we've been doing so far. Uh, and for all of the meditations we've been doing, we've been using the breath as an object to basically cultivate um, focused awareness, but with three qualities. So we started out looking at how to cultivate relaxation and really having that be the, the foundation of attention or focus. So we, um, we started using, uh, we directed our attention to the breathing, but we started using the sensation of the full breath. So just, uh, just following the sensations of the, breath, the uh, air flowing into the body and flowing out, and then really emphasizing relaxation. So um, on the, on the out breath, really relaxing, letting go, uh, releasing. And there was, an, there was an interesting question last time whether you can, whether you can uh, willfully relax or not. Uh, and that's something you can, you can explore in your, your own experience. I mean, if, uh, if, I have my, if I have my fist clenched, I can definitely, you know, I can willfully relax. And also just by, sometimes just by bringing attention to to our body that will cause relaxation. For example, you've probably been in the situation where you notice that, suddenly you notice that your shoulders are up by your ears. Have you ever had that? And just by noticing, they, they drop down. So just by bringing awareness, uh, relaxation can, can come from that. And sometimes we'll, we'll have an area like in the body where it's really, it's really stiff, contracted, tense. There's, we just can't relax there, but then maybe we can release around it. So uh, just have this sense of relaxing, releasing uh, in the area surrounding where we are uh, particularly tense. So that's a, that's an exploration of, of uh, cultivating relaxation. And, but just, uh, just coming back also throughout the day to this releasing, relaxing, coming back to the breathing, just by observing the breath, uh, relaxation will uh, often follow. So that was, that was the foundation, relaxation, because if we don't relax, we won't be able to sustain attention. It will be forced and will clamp down and we'll just wear ourselves out. So we 
will be burned out uh, pretty quickly. Uh, so then we moved on, on the basis of relaxation, we moved on to the second uh, module, which was focus. And here we, we narrowed uh, the object of our attention. So we, uh, we were observing the breathing in the abdomen, the belly, rising and falling. Um, and we also um, added, added the counting uh, or the noting of the breath. So as a way of when we become distracted of thoughts, memories, we release them and we come back and we count the breath. As a, as a tool, as a help, as a support to notice if we become distracted. Because suddenly if we're not counting, well, then we're obviously distracted. And also we, we said that we would stop at 10. So if we go on 18, 19, etc., then again, it's, we're distracted. It's autopilot. Uh, so the counting or the noting or the labeling uh, can be helpful to help us there. And then... Uh, so focus is also sometimes called stability, stability of attention. So wherever we place our attention, it stays there. Um, and then for the third, um, last week's module, we talked about clarity, how to really cultivate an attention that is high definition, like vivid, really um, uh, clear. And um, we talked about uh, times in life where we have that clarity, that vividness, and how actually nice that feels. We're not dull or spaced out, but we're really, really clearly, vividly present. And how can we cultivate that, um, that kind of awareness? And then, so then we, we moved the object of attention to the nostrils. So now we had a, a smaller um, focus area, which means that it becomes a bit more difficult uh, to pay attention. So therefore we need more clarity, we, more, we need more vividness. Uh, but at the same time, we need to base that on, on the relaxation and the stability. Um, and so obviously, uh, just going, going through this, you've had, you dipped into each of these practices uh, that doesn't mean that now we're going to be completely relaxed, our attention will be very stable and extremely clear. That's where the practice part comes in. And that practice will hopefully last for the rest of your lives. Uh, that's definitely um, what I hope for, that you, you have something that you can take with you and just keep practicing. Uh, so not to get frustrated if it's not very relaxed, not very stable, and not very clear all the time. But at least now we, we, we're starting to become aware of what qualities we're looking for, also in everyday life. We want to cultivate relaxation in everything we do. We want to cultivate stability so that when we have a conversation, I'm there, I'm not distracted, I'm really present with you. And we want to cultivate clarity because that way we'll just enjoy life so much more and we'll be much sharper with everything we do. So we want to keep just cultivating these qualities and these are just the tools to do that. And hopefully, you know, you have something uh, that you can take with you and um, keep practicing for years to come. Um, okay, one final thing before... Uh, we go into the practice. I thought I would, um, I would just read a quote. So this is from, um, I mentioned the book, The Attention Revolution by Alan Wallace. And unfortunately, we don't have it here yet. Um, we're going to order it. But a lot of uh, the structure for um, what I'm, uh, how I'm, how I'm teaching this is based on um, that book, actually. So it's, it's kind of a, it's good complementary reading material to to this course. Uh, but I just wanted to read a section on uh, what object to use when we practice. And today I will give us, um, I'll introduce yet another object. We'll move away from the breath and start looking at our own mind, our thoughts and uh, emotions and so on. Uh, and then the, 
session after that, we'll start looking at um, awareness itself. So focusing in on the mere fact of, of being aware. So, uh, so you have lots of things to choose between, and here are some just some um, uh, some guiding words from Alan Wallace on on what to focus on. And so he starts by saying to guide meditators along the ten stages. Um, and I'm not going through so in traditional texts in Buddhist texts you will see ten stages of of shamatha or ten stages of um, of this development. Um, if you if you if you get by the book, you can check them out. I'm not going into detail, but it's you know going from a very agitated, distracted mind to a super focused, um, single pointed mind. Uh, anyway, so go through these ten stages. I have chosen uh, from the Buddhist psychology three techniques that I have found effective for people in the modern world. These three techniques are the basis for the three divisions of this book. For the first four stages, you should practice whatever method you find easiest. By stage five, five the mind is relatively stable and you can move on to subtle techniques. Uh, for achieving the first four stages, I recommend the practice of mindfulness of breathing, variations of which can be found in Zen, Vipassana, Tibetan Buddhism, and so on. Mindfulness of breathing means settling your awareness on the sensations involved in breathing, continually returning your attention there whenever your mind wanders. Beginning with the fifth stage, I recommend a method called settling the mind in its natural state. In this technique, you direct your attention to mental experiences, all the events, thoughts, mental images, and emotions that arise in the domain of the mind. With the instructions for the eighth attentional stage onward, we move on to the still subtler practice of maintaining awareness of awareness itself. The technique is called shamatha without an object. Here the practice is not so much one of developing attentional stability and vividness as it is of discovering the stillness and luminosity inherent in awareness itself. The training in mindfulness of breathing may be, may be helpful to anyone, including those seeking to prevent or treat attention deficit, hyperactivity disorders. Many people find the second practice, that of settling the mind in its natural state, to be more challenging, but some meditators take to it naturally. Likewise, the practice of awareness of awareness is subtler still, but it may be optimal from from the beginning for those who are strongly drawn to it. You may, may use any one of these three methods to progress along the stages of attentional development, or you may follow the sequence, uh, or you may follow the sequence described in this course. How fast you progress will depend on the level of your commitment and the degree to which your, your lifestyle and env environment support such practice. So, the idea here is that there is, a, there is kind of a progression from uh, starting with the breath and then turning our attention to the mind. Uh, but also some people will be more drawn to, for example, the practice that we'll do later today and less drawn to, um, to focusing on the breathing. And I think that's already come up in, in, in the questions. So, um, the point here being that, you know, use whatever, whatever those methods uh, that you find most suitable for you in the situation you're in, uh, depending on what challenges you're facing currently. So it's kind of like you have, you'll have this toolbox of, of techniques, and then it's up to you to, uh, to figure out which one of these tools you, uh, you should apply at, at any given stage. But I think in the beginning it, it might be good to just follow uh, the progression and then when we get more skilled in our practice then we can kind of play around and use um, use whatever is, is most beneficial at the time. Okay, so with that I thought we would do a little summary of... Um, I'm gonna grab my phone. Uh, like a summary of what we've been doing this far. Uh, so I will, I will guide a meditation, um, mindfulness of breathing. 
but going through uh, the three uh, stages or three qualities that we've discussed so far, relaxation, focus or stability, um, and clarity. And as always, uh, it's, uh, you can sit on your chair, you can sit on um, a cushion on the floor, or you can lie down. Uh, each of these are uh, perfectly good ways of doing this exercise. And again, that's also something that you can uh, play around with. Uh, for example, if, um, if you want to emphasize relaxation, then maybe lying down um, uh, in the Shavasana or corpse posture might be the best option. Um, if you're emphasizing clarity, maybe sitting upright, um, like in this vigilant, aware, attentive posture uh, might be the best option. Okay, so whatever posture you have chosen, I invite you to you to just um, leave your head where we spend most of the days thinking, planning, fixing, thinking, thinking. So see if you can just leave the thoughts of the past and the future, worries and concerns and let your awareness drop into your body. So you're sitting or lying down with a straight back. In a posture that embodies alertness, but at the same time, you also emphasize relaxation. You can turn your attention towards the sensations of your breathing. See if you can be really curious about how it actually feels to breathe. And maybe be grateful that you can breathe without hindrance or pain. Following the full breath as it comes into the body, fills your lungs, expands your abdomen, and then flows back out. On the out breath, you can emphasize releasing, letting go, relaxing.
on the out breath, releasing tensions and letting go of concerns, worries. See if you can allow there to be only this present moment and only the movement of the breath. And on the basis of relaxation, of letting go, you can move your attention to the abdomen, to the stomach. And pay attention to the sensations of the breath, the belly rising and falling. emphasizing stability of attention. And if it's helpful, you can also add the counting. Breathing in, breathing out. Counting one. In, out, two up to 10 breaths and then backwards down to one again. And when you notice you become distracted by thoughts or memories, 
then you take the opportunity to re relax so that you don't tense up. You release the distraction and you gently return your attention back. Start counting from one again. And then finally you can move your attention to the sensations of the breathing at the nostrils. So a smaller target area for your attention. And really pay close attention to 
the sensations there. Like how the nostrils become a little bit cooler when you breathe in and a little bit warmer when you breathe out. And just as you might turn up the dimmer in a room, see if you can enhance clarity, enhance vividness of your attention. Without losing relaxation. And like before, when distractions kidnap our attention, just take the opportunity to relax. And this is the moment of mindfulness. And just release the thought. And return your attention back to that area where you can feel the sensations of the breath on the nostrils.
So that was a, that's a summary of what we've been doing. Um, uh, many, any questions or reflections on on any of that? Does that, does the, the progression make sense? That's good. So you can kind of see how they, they can kind of build on each other the, those three qualities. Okay, so then uh, we can move on to uh, the actual topic of um, uh, of today, which is um, um, an exercise called it's called settling the mind or settling the mind in its natural state. Uh, so I'm going to go through and explain what that is, what the deal is. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about what the benefits of, of this particular practice is, because for me, this is when it starts to get really interesting, actually. Uh, and then I'm going to talk about the actual pra practice. We're going to do another meditation then on, on today's topics. Uh, I'm going to give some tips. Um, and we'll see if there are any more questions. And then, like always, I'll give you some advice for how to practice this in, in the week um, or so to come. So, uh, so first of all, what, what, is, what is meant by settling the mind in its natural state? Um, so, first of all, if we look at our, our current situation, why, why we desperate, desperately need this. And I think people of, you know, pe people of modernity, people in our situations need this more than I think uh, maybe our grandparents did or if you go back generations, I think this is the perfect medicine for, for us. And the reason is that we live, in, um, we live in a situation where there's so much stimulus, there's so much information, we're constantly bombarded and just overloaded by, by input and stimulus. And I, th I think you can probably recognize uh, yourself in, in that situation. There's just too much to do all the time and uh, too much uh, choices to make and too much information to process and just too much noise and et cetera, et cetera. So what that tends to do is that it tends to then agitate our mind and it triggers a lot of thoughts and uh, and the thoughts trigger a lot of emotions so it, it our mind gets kind of as equally turbulent as, as the environment we're in uh, and I think we all we all suffer from uh, what's sometimes called obsessive compulsive thinking disorder I don't know if you do, do you sometimes feel that you think maybe too much about too many things. Um, so we, we, we get into uh, this habit, mental habit of just compulsive thinking and planning and project managing and problem solving and blah, blah, blah. And it just goes on from the moment we wake up until we uh, try to go to bed. Uh, it just keeps, keeps coming. Uh, and so also with the thoughts, because as we will see, thoughts in themselves are not necessarily the problem. Uh, I mean, the, the brain will keep probably generating thoughts, but the problem for us is that we do one of two things. We either uh, grasp onto the thoughts and identify with them so that uh, we believe in them and everything that we see kind of gets filtered uh, through this thought. So instead of just observing a thought as it arises, we kind of, it kind of, it like, it, like it's kidnapping us and, and we really believe and we buy into the story and that creates, creates lots of problems for us, especially if it's a negative story. 
and, and thoughts, uh, a lot of the time they are negative. Um, so that's, that's one, one habit that we have, that we, we get pulled away, we get identified with, we get fused with the thoughts and the emotions and everything that's happening. And then the other kind of tendency we have is that, especially if the thoughts are unpleasant, and if they're, they're triggering, triggering unpleasant emotions, then we try to just, you know, just suppress them and, and push them away and, you know, force ourselves not to think about that particular thing. Um, and suppression is, is not a very good way of handling it either because that just ends up uh, resulting a lot of physical and, and psychological problems um, because, you know, it's not going away. We're just you know, trying to... Uh, not pay attention. So both those tendencies, getting caught up and, and trying to suppress, grasping onto, pushing away, that kind of uh, makes us slaves of our own mind. So our minds are tormenting us. The thoughts, the feelings, the emotions, the impulses, uh, they are controlling us. So instead of us controlling our minds, um, we just become slaves of our own minds. Uh, so instead of our minds being our best friends, they kind of become an enemy. Like one person said, you know, my mind is a really bad neighborhood. I try not to go there alone. <laughs> uh, scary place, you know. So, um, uh, so what to do? And so there's, there's this great... Um, there's great, great metaphor for thinking. So thinking is, it's, it's amazing. I mean, it's none of the other animals seem to have it. So we have this fantastic ability to, you know, project into the future and learn from mistakes and create these complex things with our thoughts. But thinking is kind of like, um, it's a tool. So it's like, you know, what do you call it? Knife and fork. We pick up the knife and fork when we're going to have the meal because it's useful, but then we don't run around with a knife and fork all day. That would be silly. Uh, so we, we, we put them down. Or another metaphor is, uh, this is probably from some Thai meditators. You know, if you have a, what do you call it, a machete, you know, you're, you have to go through the thick forest. So you pull up your machete and then you uh, slice through the bamboo or whatever. But then you put it back. You don't go, you know, waving with it when you don't need it. Also, if you start hitting everything with it, it's just going to go dull and useless. So the metaphor is, of course, that, okay, we use thinking when it's helpful, but then we put it away. So we use thinking when we need to solve a problem or figure something out, but then we just let it rest. Uh, and I think for us, it's, it's almost impossible to even imagine a state where, where we kind of put thinking away for a while. Right? Because it's just blah, 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 all the time. So uh, communicating so far, uh, recognize, recognize the situation. Uh, so so, um, so what's, the, what's the solution to this? Well, the one proposed here is, is uh, what's called settling the mind. And what we do is we cultivate the ability to just observe mental events as mental events. Cultivate the ability to observe thoughts as thoughts or emotions as emotions, impulses as impulses, memories as memories. So, but from, a, from the perspective of an observer. So, um, I don't know, like imagine like an old man or woman sitting on a park bench and, and watching some, some kids playing over there. You know, lots of things going on, but they're just watching, I mean, with, with friendliness and care, but not, you know, they're not getting involved and in trying to solve whatever the kids are fighting about. They're just watching, you know, sitting there watching. So we kind of cultivate the same, same, uh, position of the observer, but we're watching the own, like the inner space of our minds, all the thoughts and the uh, feelings, sensations, and so on. Uh, and 
without grasping onto, so we don't, we're not identifying with, we're not buying into the story, but we're also not pushing anything away. You know, the thoughts can be there, no problem. We're just watching them. Um, and interestingly, if you, if you just look at how the, how the brain works, there are lots of processes going on at the same time. So one part of the brain might generate a thought whereas another part of the brain might observe that thought. Uh, and one, one thought in one area of the brain might trigger a reaction in some other area of the brain and emotions are yet another part of the brain. So, um, uh, so we kind of have, we obviously have this sense that we're one person, it's me. But then when we start watching we realize that, okay, thoughts just appear. It's not like I'm deliberately thinking them. They just pop up. Where did they come from? Who ordered this thought? You know, uh, who decided to, to have this emotion right now? Uh, I mean, obviously, it was, if it was under our control, we'd just decide, okay, I'll just be happy all day and think happy thoughts. Easy, PC done. But that's not how it works. It just... The mind does its own thing, but with this, uh, we're cultivating the ability to just observe it as it's happening without grasping onto it and without pushing anything away. And by doing that, uh, we can start to really let the mind settle uh, and become less controlled by, by thoughts and feelings and emotions and so on. Uh, so, making sense so far? Um, have you had any, have you tried anything like this before? Um, does it feel weird to just become an observer of our own minds? I don't know, what do you say? I think it's interesting because you usually associate your thoughts with yourself. Yeah. Like they are a part of you. Yeah. By doing this, you see that that may not be the case, and it it makes it easier to to uh, um, no stop there. I, I have to think about what I wanted to say, but yeah, yeah it, it's an interesting practice, I think. Yeah, and it, it's a good point. Like for example, thoughts or emotions. You know, we say, "I am angry." Like, that's, that's very, I am angry. It's very different from saying, oh, there's some anger arising. That's two completely different things. Uh, or, I am worried. Or, there's a, some story about worry arising. It's, it's very different. Uh, so, just having that ability of, 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 of watching. So, the benefits of this practice is, first of all, it's, it's, it's still a shamatha practice. It's still focus. It's just that the object is no longer the breath. Now the object is the mind itself, thoughts and so on. So we're still, we're still cultivating an attention that is relaxed and stable and clear, clear just, just as before. It's the same, same benefit there. But then we're also cultivating this ability of observing and witnessing what's going on. So we can also, from that, cultivate more insights and awareness into our own habits and reactions and, and so on. Uh, we're, not, we're, we're not getting caught up by thoughts, uh, so they, they don't uh, control us as much anymore. Uh, and and when, we stop, when we stop feeding into that habit of, of thinking, grasping onto thought and so on, then the mind can actually start to settle down and uh, I think if, if there's, after doing this for uh, a few years, um, I don't know, I've been meditating for 15 years, I think, one of the definite benefits, I think, is that it's a bit more quiet in there. Definitely, that's, that's one thing that I can uh, definitely say, that there's a bit, it's more peaceful. So maybe that's one of the benefits of doing this, I don't know. Um, and also, when we start, when we start not getting involved and messing with all the thoughts, 
then mind has a natural tendency to kind of heal itself. So it's like we just uh, it's like uh, letting a, uh, when you you know screw something up like uh, what do you call it the spring, and then you just release it and it kind of un unwinds itself. It's kind of like that with the mind. You just observe it and then it starts to uh, settle down and things start to without our we don't it's like uh, when we get a say we get a, a wound in the body so I'm hurt there's a there's a wound so one way of fixing it would be to you know try to you know I have to fix this and what can I do and then I just make it worse another way is just you know I, I just leave it and then the body takes care of itself it heals without me trying to you know manipulate or fix or control anything and it's kind of like that with the mind it's very interesting you just observe it, leave it, and it kind of just figures itself out, uh, like a self-healing self process. Um, and then, as I said, it's also, um, this is also the gateway to insight and, and wisdom, because when we start to observe our own inner processes, then we can also start to figure them out, and we can uh, gain insight to why we react the way we do and and so on so it's it's a good gateway into uh, the the insight practices we'll do starting next session uh, and then also this is uh, it's a tremendously good segue into uh, everyday life because if you if you have this ability throughout the day it's extremely powerful uh, so just imagine a situation where, you know, you're getting very agitated. Maybe you're in a conflict with someone. If you have this, this ability of just really observing what's going on, okay, he said that and anger was triggered. Uh, and this, th this thought about what an idiot he was came up. And so if we can just have a little bit of space so we don't buy into everything, we don't react to everything, that's extremely powerful. So this practice is also a way of, of bringing mindfulness or meditation out into uh, really everyday situations. Uh, and that's where it's uh, really powerful. So there are big benefits. Uh, and then before going into the practice, I would thought I'd just describe what we're going to do. So, uh, as I said, the object here, before we focused on the breathing, which is just physical sensations, now we're moving from the physical to the strictly mental. So we're, op uh, we're observing um, uh, things that arise in the mind. And those are things like thoughts, obviously, memories, mental images, um, impulses, and so on. So just, it's like our, the mind is like a stage and then just like actors appear on the stage, then thoughts and emotions and, and so on uh, just appear in the space of our mind. Uh, and that might, space of our mind might sound a bit new agey or something, but it's just, it's just what it is. There's this space of awareness where we can observe things. Uh, and in this, in this practice, we're not focusing on sense objects. So we're not focusing on sounds or sights or um, tactile sensations, but we are focusing on, on like the mental domain. Um, so for example, a sound might, might trigger a thought or uh, an impulse or a reaction. And we're focusing more on, more on that than the sense, um, sense objects. Um, like before, like any shamatha practice, we want to be relaxed, uh, we want to have stability and clarity, that's, that's no different. Uh, and we want to, it says here, uh, without grasping and without distraction. So the way we watch the mind is without clinging to anything, without trying to hold on to any thoughts, we just let them arise and, and pass away. But also without distract, distraction, 
meaning that we don't just want to be daydreaming and on autopilot and unaware. We want to be fully aware and not distracted and present with clarity. And that's a bit tricky because in the beginning, watching thoughts, we'll just start thinking them and you know, off we go and we forget we're meditating or practicing mindfulness. And then five minutes later, we can oh, wake up and, oh, I was supposed to uh, be aware of all of this. So, um, so that, that's a challenge in the beginning. But also at the same time, it's good to know that the thoughts are not a problem. Uh, we're not trying to stop thoughts or get rid of them because that's, uh, I think that's impossible probably, unless you want to go into like a 30,000 hour full-time 15 year retreat, then maybe you can stop your thoughts. I don't know. But for normal people living in this, this world, uh, there's going to be lots of thoughts. So they're not the problem. Actually, they're, uh, they're just the object of awareness. So whatever comes up, we just observe, not a problem. We don't try to stop them. Uh, and also, um, in this practice, it's good to keep, keep the eyes slightly open. So instead of, uh, instead of having the eyes closed, we can just open them and um, have what's called a vacant gaze. So we're not looking at anything in particular. We just have an open, uh, open gaze or um, yeah, just letting our, our um, just watching but not looking at something in particular. And, and the benefits of having the eyes open is that first it tends to bring more clarity when we close the eyes, it gets, it's easier to fall asleep. It gets a bit more dull. Maybe some of you have already experimented with opening the eyes to get more clarity. Uh, and it also, it also grounds us in the present moment. Because uh, just watching, we're, we're aware of what's actually going on right now. So it kind of, it's an anchor that keeps us in this present moment. Uh, and again, uh, if we if we learn to meditate with the eyes open, it's easier to take this into daily life, because if we're used to if you always associate this practice with closed eyes, then you know when when we're in the office or in, we're when when we're in that situation that conflict or whatever, then this is not triggered because we're used to uh, having our eyes closed. So. So keeping the eyes slightly open is also makes it easier to bring this into uh, daily life. Um, and then uh, final two points that um, if you're unsure um, where to focus, um, what are we looking at? Then, then you can, you can um, intentionally generate a thought, like any thought, like... Uh, I don't know, the thought, now I'm thinking this thought, for example. So we, we just generate that thought and we watch it. So, and since we deliberately generate a thought, it's also easier to catch it because we know when it's coming. Okay, now I generate that thought. This is me thinking a thought or something. And then, so that, that thought will come and then it will go. And then you kind of just watch the space where it was. I don't know if that makes sense. So where did you watch that thought? It's not like a place in space, but it's a mental place or something. So then you just keep looking there and eventually something else will pop up. Now it's not a thought that you decided to think. It's just, you know, did I really turn off the stove when I left this morning? Or I wonder what that bus chaos was all about. Or man, this is boring or, you know, whatever, whatever comes up, you just, watch it. Um, and final point is if it gets, um, if it's difficult, if you get distracted, if you get kidnapped, then it's good to just um, use what's called mental labeling or noting. So when the thought comes up, for example, you can just label it memory maybe, or maybe just thought, or maybe image, you know, whatever pops up. So by, by attaching that little label that, that helps us to uh, 
maintain that position of the observer of watching. Um, so that's uh, that's a little um, helpful tool uh, to keep keep um, that position of observing and watching. Um, okay, so that's that's what I thought we would do. Any any questions? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the first time I will do this. So I yeah. have a question on what happens if you have, say, a displeasant thought. Yeah. Uh, something that angers you. Yeah. Perhaps. Or what should you do? Should you kind of intervene, like control the thoughts? Maybe like say like, no, that's not true, or no, like I don't want that. Mm. And and try to move on. Or, or should you like observe it deeper? Uh, how long should it last? Like how? Yeah, uh, that's a, a that's an extremely good question, um, and so it's those uh, those two tendencies we have, either to get involved, like st we start arguing with a thought. No, no, that's not really true. He also has these qual blah 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 blah. So here we don't want to do that. Uh, so that's one getting involved is one extreme that we don't want to fall into. The other extreme is trying to push it away, like oh I, I shouldn't have these angry thoughts, you know, down boy, ah, you know whatever, get out of here. So that's the other extreme. So what we're doing here is is just watching. Uh, without interfering, and this is, I mean, it's not easy because we're not used to doing this, but just letting it play itself out. So, okay, here's the angry thought, and it just keeps repeating and watching it, but then eventually it will just run out of steam and, and, and move on. Uh, and th that's actually true for every thought and every emotion you ever had. They came, they stayed, they went. If that wasn't true, you'd be having them all right now. You, you know, you'd still be angry, and you're not. So, so, sure? <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you don't look angry. <laughs> what I'm thinking is, it's difficult to, because usually with the with the other exercise, mm -hmm. you, your anchor will be the breath. Yeah. You can always return to that. Yes. But here you've got no anchor, so it's 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 going to be difficult to step away from the thought that is coming. Yeah. Because you don't know what to do instead. Yeah. And keeping the thought or looking at it will automatically for a lot of people mean that you, you start thinking. Yeah. And you become involved. Yeah. So so that would be the Yeah, that is, um, that is the challenge. Yeah, the challenge. And if, if, it, if it gets, you know, completely overwhelming, then you can definitely just return to the breath. So you do some mindfulness of breathing for a few minutes, and then you release that, and then you kind of open up your awareness to whatever's going yeah, on. Yeah, I was also thinking about the labeling. If, if it starts coming, you can say, thought. Yeah. <laughs> then you're labeling your labels. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but um, and the other, I mean, the other uh, thing to do is is to really consciously generate a thought, and then let it arise and and pass, and then keep watching that space. Um, yeah. But the, the point is to, to, to maintain that position of the neutral observer as much as possible. Yeah. I, it just, I just get really like, 
I, I'm not. I'm not sure on, on where to locate or or, or what to, you know. Or, or is it is it motivation? Is it? I mean, it's just it's it's a bit wild actually. Yeah, it is. It is wild, and I mean, who's watching who? To begin with, you know. And who's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but, but that's that's session. Uh, that's actually session eight. <laughs> So uh, maybe this is a prelude to, uh, but that is a good, you know, who's, who's riding the roller coaster and, and, and who's watching the one riding the roller coaster? And who's watching the one watching the one riding the roller coaster? And, you know, so it's, uh, so without getting into like a philosophically complicated debate on, on that, I think, um, here, rather than riding the roller coaster, you're just watching the roller coaster. It's kind of like you're standing on the train station and the train comes in. And instead of getting on board and going, you're just standing there and allowing the train to leave the station. I don't know if that metaphor makes sense. Having also got on board the train. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. Uh, but yeah, so in, instead of yeah, so instead of thinking the thought, we're observing the thought. Okay. And for most people, most people aren't even aware that, that there is that difference between just thinking a thought and observing a thought. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I'll let you decide for yourself whether that makes sense. I'm actually going to, uh, I'm just going to have to go get piece of paper. Okay, so let's dive in. And with this, uh, with this practice, it's it's good to have a um, I don't know a, cu a curious attitude. So be kind of like a like be a scientist of your own uh, mind and brain and experience. So it's, it's really like your own mental workshop or mental laboratory. But um, starting out, just as always, Make sure that you sit in a comfortable posture. In the beginning, we can just emphasize relaxation, allowing the shoulders to drop down, relaxing the face. Let your face be like the face of a sleeping baby. releasing, relaxing the jaw. And just letting the body settle. Letting the, uh, the breathing move in a natural pace and rhythm. And 
also dropping all expectations. So you're not trying to fix or control or achieve something. You're just observing. If you want, you can allow your eyes to be slightly open. So you rest your gaze in front of you. And then you observe the space of the mind, your own awareness. Whatever happens, whatever appears, without grasping on to anything, without identifying with So without getting distracted and carried away. And if you're curious as to what you should be attending to, then you can intentionally generate a thought. Like maybe the thought, I am thinking. And then just observe that thought arise and fall back to the space of the mind. And then you just keep watching where that thought was. Just waiting for the next thought or memory or image to arise.
And like before, if you notice that you've become kidnapped by distractions, then just relax and release that distraction and return your attention. Like sitting in the chairs, in the audience chairs of a theater and watching the stage where actors and props appear. Also, if you find that you get carried away and caught up, see if you can use the mental noting or labeling. Memory, thought, emotion. Maybe also notice how the sound of people moving will trigger thoughts, trigger emotions. Just watch them arise, stay for a while and fall back again. And if you get frustrated with yourself, then just observe frustration. If you get restless, then just observe restlessness.
And then finally, I just invite you to just release all effort, release all appearances. And just allow the mind to come to rest without doing anything at all. So just be present and rest in that stillness of awareness. Okay, so I thought maybe you could pair up and um, have a little chat about that um, exercise and uh, what your experience was. Uh, two or two or th three and three maybe um, in one case. And then I'll be back in a few minutes Ut i det härliga vädret. Okej, okay, så... So, um, how did the experiences compared, I guess, to what we've done so far? So helpful in, in relation to what you came in with or yeah. yeah.
Mm. Yeah. Uh, I think um, um, in a, in a lot of ways, this is this is like better than you know any therapy we can attend. Uh, just watching and, and letting things like play themselves out is, is, can be very, very healing, very, very powerful. Yeah. Because I have this, I have this thing I worked out a few years ago that there's nothing wrong with the universe. So the idea about being sick or wrong and stuff like that has actually thrown some, um, made the problems more interesting to solve. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's still, it's still. Hmm. Yeah, we're solving. We're solving without us fixing. I think that's, yeah. The emotional difference between resolution and revolution. It's like the, the, the side effects are just so smoother and less aggressive. <laughs> Mm. Thank you. Um, yeah, any other observations? Is this, was this, is this more difficult or less difficult than focusing on the... Yeah, sorry. I thought it was going to be too easy. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I started and I was like, uh, uh, and then I had to, on purpose, think something just to observe it. Yeah. To get some start. Yeah. And it, I mean, it, it, it's also okay if, if there's nothing, there's mm -hmm. nothing. Uh, so was there, was there like nothing happening when... Nothing's going on here. What's the problem here? There's, there's no thoughts here. Okay. Oh, by the way, oh, these are thoughts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The mind needs the problem to solve. Yeah. <laughs> Give me something to do. Yeah. But yeah. So if, if there is nothing, that's, that's actually very nice. So then we just sit with some quiet for a while. I, um, at some point when, well, like an in-between thought or something, when I kind of, I realized my own presence again, like in terms of reality, I, I noticed that my breathing intake was very, very different mm -hmm. from the other exercise. Um, and I realized that my breathing, when I was just following all of the thoughts, I was very, very like focused somehow, like on, in, in the thoughts, mm -hmm. like in an observe mode, and my breathing was not deep, mm -hmm. not relaxed, it was like very silent and, and very short, like mm -hmm. almost like you're ready to do something, but you're not, so that breathing was very different from the other exercise. I think I prefer the other exercise, where you can actually mm. relax yeah. Feel yeah. Just yeah. Uh, so then, I I would go with that impulse and emphasize relaxation. Um, yeah, and then 
maybe you can come back to this, but uh, so maybe even the, the first exercise with just the full, full breath and just releasing, letting go, relaxing. Uh, so, yeah, thank you. And even, I mean, the, the breathing also needs to resolve itself because uh, we, we completely, uh, we fucked our breathing up. I don't know if that's an accurate term, but we're, uh, we can't even breathe properly uh, because we don't allow the body to just breathe. We just, we're constantly using the, bre the breathing to control emotions and, and then we end up, you know, having, <laughs> and, and yeah, no matter we get stressed, we can't even, can't even breathe properly. So it's, it's good to just start with, with that exercise. Yeah. Uh, okay. To me, this is a good challenge because I was exploring theater. It feels like opening up and standing by a big black hole and allowing, allowing everything to come. Mm -hmm. And you don't know what's going to come. So uh, fear arises and anxiety. And then two words come to help me, uh, trust and love. Like whatever comes, I'm going to be able to be with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I get this image of a martial arts uh, like fighter <laughs> or something. Everything that's coming up is like, ooh, <laughs> Like the Matrix when the bullets yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and I can feel like sensations in my body when things are released, and I was like, okay, that's a little bit scary, but I can be with this tingling, and then I'm like proud of myself of handling this one too. Um, so, and it feels like a, like a like a lagom portion mm. of the things. <laughs> yeah. really, it's not yeah. too much, I can handle it. Lagom martial arts. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's a bit of work, but it's good work. Mm. Sounds, sounds perfect. Yeah. And it's... Um, so it's, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty obvious that thoughts can enslave us, that thoughts can torment us, that thoughts can kind of pretty much wreck our lives. But I mean, if we, if we start watching, thoughts have no power. I mean, they're practically nothing. They're like, I don't know, like images projected on smoke or something. They're just completely... So thoughts only have whatever power we give to them, uh, no more, no, le no less. So it, just, just watching, observing, uh, they, they don't have any power over us um, and we can just let them release themselves. Uh, and that can be quite powerful. And it usually, yeah, it usually happens in a, it's like a self-regulating process. We get logom. You know, we get just the right amount that we can deal with, and then, yeah. yeah I would like to ask you, do you differ between thoughts and emotions? Because emotions like anxiety and obsessive emotions mm. that generate dark thoughts can be quite hard to deal with even in, in meditation. Yeah. If you are sort of in meditation, meditating on more abstract subjects, or, or like that, it can be quite uplifting. Mm. I had the experience now when I meditated that uh, I'm, I'm in a period where I worry very much, but when I started to, to reflect on the memory of, of uh, Sandros or whatever it is called in English, uh, suddenly it brightened up and, and the dark emotions sort of vanished. Mm. But I would like to hear what you think about the difference between thoughts and emotions like inner energies within the self or within the consciousness of us being. Wow, yeah. I think, I mean, it's, it's definitely, you, it definitely makes sense to, to separate, separate between thoughts, 
which is usually like the story. They are conceptual. And the emotions, which also uh, always have a physical correlate. I mean, they're, the anxiety is in the tightness of the chest or uh, the heat of the stomach or something. I mean, there's always a, um, a physical component. And I mean, it's, it's emotions that we care about more than anything, feelings. We want the, we want the nice, good feelings and we don't want the bad, nasty feelings. And then we do pretty much anything to get away from the bad ones and grasp onto the good ones. So, so I think in a way emotions are more, uh, more primary and more fundamental to, uh, to our well-being. Um, but then again, emotions are, uh, if you look at any emotion, you also find a conceptual story uh, that is fueling that emotion. So the story we're telling ourselves is, is giving rise to the emotion. And then that emotion will trigger the story. And then, yeah. Uh, so, but, but in terms of this exercise, we treat them exactly the same. We, we observe the emotion and that can, you know, we need some courage and some self-care uh, because it can be scary but we try not to we try just watch the emotion without feeding into the story and we try to just watch the story if that arises um, yeah so I don't know if that was an answer at all to the question but yeah um, okay. um, final question Final, second to final question. It's so interesting what you said about the, the thoughts and the emotions, and what you said as well. Uh, because when I was thinking, I, I realized, you know, I was thinking, and I saw a happy memory. But before I was smiling, I just knew in my mind that I was happy that mm -hmm. I loved my dog because I saw my dog yeah. running very funny on the sidewalk. But before I laughed, I just knew that in my mind that I was kind of happy, it was fun, it was love. And then I, I, I felt it spread like in my body and I also felt like my mouth was going a little bit like this and I was like, okay, this is not the time to laugh. <laughs> uh, and then... Uh, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I was like, okay, now I start to feel my body so I'm losing my mind, like mm. just to go back to the thoughts, uh, which I did. And then I saw like the, the downside of that story because eventually my dog died. So I actually saw when he became like hmm. sick. And I was like, okay, this is taking a bad turn. I know where I'm going. So I, I saw that in my mind, and then I felt it in my stomach, like when I got really sad. Hmm. So for me, the feelings came from the thought, as you said, from the story, yeah. which I saw in the beginning, that triggered the feeling, the laughter or the sadness. Hmm. Wow, that's called insight. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Totally fine that you're laughing hysterically yeah. if it comes. If it comes, I mean, it subsides. Yeah. Okay. I was going to say this. What you were saying about thoughts and feelings, I've got I kind of got a visual from from that. So I do relate to what you're saying very much. But it was something like like a, a thought. Like Yeah, that's very well put and very poetic and very true because all the, you know, 
we make these little categories, thoughts and emotions, and it's, it's just a interconnected, seamless, fluid thing, but it kind of makes sense to, to sort things into little boxes so we can get a handle. Okay, so I think you have uh, uh, you have uh, something to do till next time we we meet, and I think one of the most important things to to have is this curiosity. Like I'm really I'm really interested in observing myself and and figuring out what's going on, uh, and. Yeah, when, when we have that, that inquisitiveness and that, uh, and if we pair that with some self-care and self-concern, then this can be uh, a really interesting journey. Um, and then, then you'll fig start figuring out that we, it's, it's kind of like we live in the matrix but it's the matrix of our own making. I mean, it's our thoughts, our interpretations triggering our emotions. So it's, um, it can be quite liberating because we, we realize that, okay, uh, I'm, I'm not just a victim of whatever is happening. I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually co-creating my whole experience. And then when we start figuring that out, then, uh, we can start, um, I don't know, creating more wholesome, wholesome ways of relating. And we start understanding more about ourselves and then we start understanding more about other people and that can be also a, a trigger for maybe growing more empathy and, and compassion and concern and, and insight and wisdom and so on. So yeah, simple practice, we're just watching, but results can be really profound. Um, okay, so um, the suggestion for the week to come is to, to do this, this uh, practice now, maybe 15 minutes every day, like before you can, you can start the day by setting a good intention and doing 15 minutes maybe of this practice. Um, and then, um, uh, throughout the day, remembering to, to come back to, um, uh, come back to awareness and, and um, whenever we remember, we can just uh, like use three breaths to become relaxed and centered and focused. And then just spend a few moments in, in this kind of open awareness, just uh, watching what's appearing watching the thoughts and the emotions and, and everything that, that's happening. Uh, and then we just release and then we go back to doing whatever we're doing. Uh, and so we create these little, like, little islands of, of mindfulness, of awareness, and we try to make them more and more continuous so that eventually we'll, we'll kind of have more throughout life. We'll just have more awareness of, our own reactions and feelings and thoughts and naturally we just be present with whatever's going on so we're not kidnapped and pulled away and 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 on our autopilot uh, and then uh, evening uh, just like before you can do the shavasana meditation so lying down on the bed uh, and then just uh, following the rhythm of the breathing Again, releasing tension <gasps> uh, and just just letting go, letting go of thoughts and and it's kind of like uh, letting the thoughts I don't know dissolve into I don't know, space, whatever. Just releasing them, just letting them go, uh, and then using that relaxation, that um, presence to kind of 
move into to sleep uh, and relaxation and then when you feel that you're getting sleepy just uh, move on move over to the side or something that signals that and okay this is the end of the meditation and kind of segueing into sleep uh, and then yeah that's it so good luck with watching your your minds and yeah I'll be interested in hearing what you what you find till next time <laughs> <laughs> yeah. thank you <laughs>